This video will provide an overview of the steps used to extract a frozen sample of a mammalian tissue for metabolomics. Proper tissue collection procedure is required for a successful metabolomics experiment, and these steps are not covered in this video. Viewers should consult with the staff of the Michigan Regional Comprehensive Metabolomics Resource Corps for more details. Assemble supplies. All needed supplies should be assembled before beginning tissue extraction. These items include dry ice to keep tissue samples frozen before extraction, wet ice to keep tissue samples and extraction solvent cool, either a mortar and pestle and a probe sonicator to disrupt the cells in the powdered tissue, or a bead beater type sample homogenizer, which both grinds tissue and disrupts cells in a single step. A benchtop microcentrifuge, preferably refrigerated to 4 degrees C for pelleting tissue debris. Pipettes, microcentrifuge vials, and autosampler vials to contain and manipulate the samples. And finally, the extraction solvent, which is used to lyse the tissue, dissolve metabolites, and precipitate proteins and other macromolecules. Typical extraction solvents for polar metabolites are organic solvents such as methanol or acetonitrile, or a mixture of these solvents with water. Extraction of nonpolar metabolites such as lipids requires nonpolar solvents such as chloroform or methyl tertiary butyl ether. Today, we are using an extraction solvent composed of 7 parts methanol, 2 parts water, and 1 part chloroform, which provides a balanced extraction of polar and moderately nonpolar metabolites. Depending on the analysis, internal standard compounds may need to be added. Consult with the staff of the Metabolomics Corps for specific recommendations regarding preparation of a suitable extraction solvent. Cryopulverization. This method works well for all tissue types and allows the use of samples of different sizes, but is labor-intensive and offers limited throughput. Step 1. Cryopulverize tissue sample. Pre-chill the mortar and pestle by adding liquid nitrogen until the rate of boil-off decreases. Once the mortar is cold, add your sample to the mortar and grind to a fine powder with the pestle. If needed, more liquid nitrogen can be added. Please note that gloves and safety goggles should be worn at all times and appropriate safety precautions observed when working with liquid nitrogen. Step 2. Transfer sample to vial. Transfer the desired amount of pulverized tissue to a pre-weighed, pre-chilled microcentrifuge tube. If desired, check the weight of the tube with the sample to ensure the mass of tissue is within a tolerable range of the target value. Work quickly to prevent thawing during weighing. In this example, we aim to place 30 mg plus or minus 5 mg of tissue in each tube. Step 3. Add solvent and sonicate. Add the desired amount of chilled extraction solvent to the tube containing the pulverized sample and immediately sonicate until the suspension is homogeneous. Keep the tube in an ice bath throughout to keep the solvent cool. In this example, we add 1 milliliter of extraction solvent and sonicate for 20 seconds with the sonicator set to deliver one pulse every second. Step 4. Centrifuge. Once all samples have been extracted, centrifuge the tubes at 15,000 times gravity for 5 minutes to pellet all cell debris. Step 5. Remove supernatant. After centrifugation is complete, remove the vials and collect a measured volume of supernatant using a pipette. This supernatant can be transferred directly to vials for analysis or dried down using a vacuum centrifuge or a gentle stream of nitrogen gas. Whether the samples are dried or not, they should be stored at minus 20 degrees C or lower if analysis will not be performed immediately, and they should be shipped on dry ice. To normalize between samples, the pellet remaining in the tube can be dried and weighed to determine the dry mass or assayed for protein content. Method B, bead beater type homogenizer. This method works well for most tissue types, although extremely tough tissues may be challenging to homogenize. Throughput is higher than the cryopulverization method as many samples can be processed in parallel. Always follow the manufacturer's directions for your device and tissue type to determine the correct mixture and quantity of beads to use and the correct volume of extraction solvent. Step 1. Transfer sample to vial. Transfer the frozen tissue sample directly to a pre-weighed, pre-chilled tube containing an appropriate quantity of tissue disruption beads. Be sure the tubes are compatible with your homogenizer. Step 2. Add extraction solvent and homogenize. Add an appropriate volume of chilled extraction solvent to the sample and then operate the homogenizer to disrupt the tissue samples. 
Steps 3 and 4, Centrifuge and Remove Supernatant. Follow the same procedure for centrifuging and removing the supernatant as described in Method A. For samples being sent to the Metabolomics Core for analysis, please contact Core staff for additional instructions about extracting, drying, or shipping your samples.